Hi, welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about 18 mistakes that new travelers can make, and I am going to share them so that you don't make these mistakes. My name is Roseanne, for those of you that are new, so let's get started. The very, very first thing is don't overpack. If you overpack, you end up carrying way more than you need. You are carrying a heavy luggage. Make sure that when you pack, you have clothes that are versatile, that you can layer your clothes, that you have clothes that can mix and match. I know that merino wool works really well because you air it out at night and it's fresh as a daisy the next day. So those are really great uh, packing tips. Just make sure that when you pack, be cognizant that you're the one that's going to be carrying that suitcase and try to do the best that you can where you can manage it. And don't forget, you want to bring back souvenirs. So you have to figure out how to do that as well. The second thing is to make sure the country that you're going to doesn't have visa requirements because you need to have visa requirements if you're going into certain countries. So you don't want to make that mistake. And starting in 2024, there's not a set date yet, but in 2024, all of Europe, they're going to need you to fill out this form, B-T-I-A-S. And what that means, European Travel Information and Authorization System. Now, this is not a visa, and it's going to cost you um, anywhere between 7 and $8, depending on what the U.S. dollar conversion is with euros. But this is a really important new procedure that Europe is doing. And what that is, while it's not a visa, what it is is making sure it's an extra check to make sure that you can travel in Europe, that there is more security in line. And so those that is going into effect. And in at the end of 2024, beginning of 2025, somewhere around there, the UK is going to have the same thing. Now, a travel agent can help you fill that form out. It's not that complicated. There's going to be a website. One of the things that um, when I was researching this, there's going to only be one website. And already there are uh, websites that are mimicking this procedure, but it's not live yet. It's not going to go live till next year. And you need to make sure that you're on the official website. So another task you want to remember, what you may or may not need to do is contact your bank and your credit cards. I know that there are a lot of credit cards that monitor your movement, so you don't need to let them know when you're going abroad. They figure that out. Um, I know my Chase cards, I don't need to notify them anymore, but you may need to notify your bank and your credit cards if you are traveling abroad so that they know that um, they know to make your authorization go through. So you need to check to make sure about that. And another tip when you're looking at your bank, make sure your credit card does not have any foreign transaction fees because that can add up. There are many credit cards out there that don't charge a foreign transaction fee. So you want to make sure that your card is one of those. Also, when you're in another country and they ask you, do you want to pay in US dollars or do you want to pay in the local currency? Always choose the local currency because they'll do, your bank will do a better conversion rate than they will for you. Another thing that's super important uh, when you're a new traveler, when you've traveled a lot, you kind of get the message around this, but don't overbook your itinerary. Make sure you have time for leisure. Make sure you have time to explore what you want to do. Don't fill all these excursions in. It's exhausting. It's really, it really is ends up being tiring. So make sure that when you do your itinerary, you have fun things to do and you have downtime to explore, relax, do the things that you would do to really absorb the culture of the place that you're at. And 
Buying travel insurance is really important. We've learned this from COVID, how important it is. When you have travel insurance, you can get reimbursed for your trip, even within 24 hours of your trip if something should happen. And if you are in another country, you might need to get ex um, you know, sent back due to illness. It, it's so cheap to buy and it protects you on your trip that it's a really worthwhile thing to do. And it's always really fun to learn a little bit of the language that you're going to. It really shows the locals that you are making an effort to understand their culture. So I always feel like it's super important to make sure that you learn a few words, even if it's hello, good morning, thank you. Those really go a long way in making your host country feel like, wow, you, you care about us. Now, don't exchange money at the airport. It's always more expensive. If you're desperate, of course, and you don't care about the money, then you can do it. <laughs> you know, it's not like it's off, you know, it's forbidden. But if you want to manage your money and you want to be just a little more frugal, don't exchange your money at the airport. Sometimes I buy the money of the country I'm going to ahead of time so I have cash. Or when you get there, if you go to an ATM, um, you can get cash at a good um, transaction, at a good uh, exchange rate if you use an ATM. But be aware of the ATMs that charge you a fee and then charge you another fee. So you want to pay attention to that. When I was in Scotland, all of those ATM machines, they were everywhere. They had no transaction fees. And so it took me a while to register what that meant. But those were really great places to get cash if you needed cash. And with that said, you want to make sure that you do carry some cash because at some places you're not going to be able to use your credit card. Most places take credit cards, but be careful of American Express. I would not bring American Express with me to Europe. I would bring it as a secondary card in case, but make sure you have a Visa or MasterCard, but always have some cash because when you go in to get a coffee, it could be one euro or it could be super cheap and you're not going to want to charge with a credit card for that. So just keep that in mind to always have a little bit of cash with you when you're traveling. Now, one of the big mistakes that new travelers do is not double check how to use your phone when you're in another country. So make sure you call your carrier, make sure you know what your plan is, make sure you understand the fees because you can rack up a super high phone bill if you don't know exactly what you're paying for. When you're in another country, you could use Wi-Fi calling, you could use WhatsApp, you could use all of that stuff and it doesn't charge you Wi-Fi calling and WhatsApp. But if you go to call regular with your cellular data, that is what can really add up. So make sure that you know what your phone plan is going to charge you. And I always like to say, make sure you have a copy of your important documents, a copy of your passport, even your driver's license, may have a hard copy of your itinerary, any important phone numbers, because if anything should happen, if your phone should die, should break, should fall into the lake or the river, make sure that you have your important documents with you and that they're in a hard copy, preferably in a nice plastic envelope in your backpack or something so that you keep them on your person and not in your suitcase. So they're always with you and your person while you're traveling. You need to be aware of some local scams. There are some places when you travel that are infamous for their scamming of tourists. You just need to just be aware. It's all good. You know, keep, make sure that you're very secure with your stuff. In fact, I did a video about keeping safe while traveling right here. Um, but you know, you want to make sure you have your precautions that you know how to um, navigate a very busy city with a reputation of pickpocketing or a reputation of, you know, scamming you in some way. Just be aware because when you have knowledge, that is power. And one big mistake if you're traveling is not to eat the local food. It's so important and part of the whole experience of traveling is to try 
foods that are local to the region. Now, when I was in Scotland, they have some interesting local food. Haggis is one of them. And so on the very last day of the trip, I was in, we were in this um, Scottish experience event and they served haggis and you know I was a little bit scared to eat it but what I did is I did I took a bite I was brave and I took a bite because I wanted to experience it and I did not like it but that's okay because I tasted it so experience the local food and you'll find amazing things as well as things that might be a little so you know it's part of the experience of traveling and make sure to budget appropriately. Um, make sure that you have a realistic budget for when you're traveling. You can do traveling on any type of budget. You could have a very low end budget. You could have a high end, no budget budget, but make sure that you know what you have and how much you're going to spend. And that way you don't get surprised at the end. Sometimes that can happen. All of a sudden, it just creeps up on you and went, oh my goodness, I spent more than I wanted. So it's always nice to have a good idea of what you want to spend. And make sure your electrical adapters will go into the country that you're going in. Now, there are some hair appliances that will not work and they don't automatically convert from 240 to 140 or whatever that is. Um, and so you can buy a converter box that can do that for you. So your blow dry brush will work, but it's really heavy and it may or may not work. So when you bring your appliances, make sure that they can convert internally. That makes a big difference and make sure that you have the adapters that you can plug into the electrical outlet. Super easy to go online and uh, find out that information for the country that you're going to. Another thing that's really important is to inform your family and friends, and you can also go on to the state.gov website and look to see um, if there are any restrictions, and you can register when you go to another country. So if anything should happen there, you would get notified um, of any anything. Like, for example, these people that were in Israel and traveling, um, if you were registered, you would have gotten a not notification. It was time to leave. So God bless all those people in that um, conflict in the Middle East. Um, send prayers every day for peace in the Middle East. Anyway, I digressed <laughs> of thinking about the war, but... Um, what I wanted to say is make sure that you, your family knows where you are and where your itinerary, where you are in your itinerary so they can um, have an idea if anything should happen that they know how to get in contact with you or whatever city that you're in or whatever country that you're in just for safety precautions. It's always good to have a backup plan. Another thing that is uh, something that you want to make sure you do when you're traveling is not just stay in the tourist zones to make sure that you venture out and uh, look at places that are maybe not so known. For example, in Rome, there are so many neighborhoods that are just so great to visit. But when you go to Rome, you're usually staying in these certain areas and you're staying the, you know, the main attractions. But if you go outside, um, there's this really great, cool neighborhood called Travestere. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it is the cutest little area. And so going outside of the main attractions and finding those neighborhoods that are unique and more local really enriches your experience when traveling. And lastly, just for um, safety, it's always nice to have some type of backup plan if something should go wrong. Now, most people don't go on vacation with a backup plan. But if you have a travel agent, that person could be your contact if anything should go wrong and could redirect you and help you to find what you need to find so that you can continue on your journey because sometimes things happen and the best way to deal with it is just to go with the flow 
and uh, don't let it ruin your time because when you're traveling anything can happen and that's the beauty of traveling is that you can step into any situation and just deal with it because there's nothing else you can do right um, just having that mindset really helps you uh, to just to go with the flow. So anyway, I hope that all of that's been helpful. I hope that whether you're a new traveler or an old traveler <laughs> or an experienced traveler, that these tips will remind you or teach you um, how to really fully experience your vacation and make it the best that it can be. So uh, anyway... I have a link below if you want to get a packing list or a to-do list when you're going on an international trip. And um, ciao for now. Take care. Bye.